boys and girls, welcome to the grand final of the MDL Southeast Asia Qualifier. We're gonna hear, we're here actually to see who will be making it to MDL from the C region. We have got Clutch Gamers and we have Maneski making it to the final two. And they are gonna be dishing it out in a best of five. And I am Lysander, gonna be guiding you guys through this action. Let me give you some Dota sounds and before uh, yeah, we get too far along in the draft, I'd just like to say just got a shout out to clutch gamers these guys have been really taking a dump on some of the better teams in southeast asia recently taking out faceless as well to one huge deal for these underdogs in southeast asia and uh, i wish them nothing but the best moving forward but of course maneski you know have uh, some of the you know most insane players right now in the southeast asian region we got my good friend adam as well on that squad so it's going to be very hard to root for either one of these teams i just hope we got ourselves some good old dota all right we're gonna hop into the draft here crystal maiden terrorblade going to be the first two picks here for maneski and clutch gamers are going to run lena and treant right off the bat so uh we already got ourselves some uh, good mix of op quote quote on both sides of the Draft, we've got Terrorblade, who has been deemed a little, a little, a little powerful. I wouldn't say too strong that uh, pros have started whining about him yet, but he definitely is a hero that you don't want to mess with because uh, similar to other heroes like Troll Warlord, he has that ability to just punish a lost team fight and turn a game on its head, even if you were really, really far ahead previously. And uh, it's not the first time I've seen a Terrorblade uh, wipe out a game that they were 10,000 gold behind just because they took one good team fight close to the enemy tier 2 tower. So uh, definitely going to have to worry themselves with that. But Clutch Gamers, they get themselves the Lena. This girl has always been the favorite sibling of Ice Frog. I think uh, Ice Frog doesn't like the blonde so much. Always uh, decided to opt for buffing Lena, nerfing Crystal Maiden's move speed, nerfing her base intelligence, buffing Lena's attack range. Ice Frog, uh, as a dad, does play favorites in this uh, in this particular case. And uh, as always, the redhead sister always uh, managing to you know, pop out as the meta pick in the draft. Whoa! Okay, wait, Lena, a hero that has been discussed heavily on Reddit as well as uh, various circles being deemed as too quote quote OP. So uh, definitely have to watch out for that. Of course, uh, Armel, I do believe plays this hero. Could be different. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a support Lena anymore, but it could happen. But I do believe Armel will be picking up that Lena. And uh, I do, if I remember correctly, in a series against Faceless, he went 22 and zero of all three games. Out of all three games, he went 22 and zero on his hero. So. Definitely gonna watch out for this guy. I could be uh, talking about their carry player and just being a total fool right now, but I hope not. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Lena. Also very powerful because of her attack range, able to siege from a long range and at quick attack speed as well, at high attack speeds as well. So very scary combo to deal with. Now I want to talk about the Tusker pick here from Maneski. It's not something you see very often here. Uh, definitely. I think it's an Adam hero. It does seem like an Adam hero. He is the kind of playmakery player on them. He used to play that support weaver with the Aghanim Scepter. You know, there are a few other things as well. So, Mr. Adam Shah here is going to uh, probably play up the Tusker. I haven't seen too much of this guy um, except in a recent video on uh, YouTube made by one of them meme lords. Uh, I think it was combo Waka Waka, I think, uh, doing the Rupture blood Bloodseeker uh, combo with Tusker's kick, the Aghanim Scepter upgrade, was hilarious, but apart from that, I haven't really been seeing as much Tusker as that, well, as, as from before, so definitely looking forward to seeing this one and seeing how Adam uh, pulls this hero off. <clears throat> Clutch Gamers do seem like they are setting up for a Juggernaut pick, but uh, right now, they're leaving it. You know, kind of mysterious. It could be Juggernaut, it could be Anti-Mage, it can also be Faceless Void. So it's going to make that final ban here for Maneski a little bit difficult. Wanting to make them you know, waste the ban into something that Clutch wasn't thinking about picking. I do believe Juggernaut will be the choice here. Maybe not, since uh, Maneski are picking a lot of anti-magic, anti, anti you can almost say. Uh, Beastmaster, PS's Magic Community, so... It's gonna be a little bit rough to play Juggernaut. There's also the Warrior's Punch. 
there's the sigil. It's a lot of things that you have to worry about, even as a juggernaut against this Maneski draft. Mushi does have a plan. And of course, it will be giving Mag the Beastmaster, I think, in his inaugural game in Southeast Asia. I casted that match as well. He played some insane darks here. So, the guy from CIS, the foreign talent, you could almost say, brought into Maneski, is uh, definitely something you should be looking out for, especially if you are a Mushi fan. So, yeah. Gonna see who, uh, gonna see who Clutch do pick up. Uh, eventually, they are fearful of the slot, so Maneski are gonna ban that one out. It's a good choice as well, slot thus make be playing Beastmaster a little bit more complicated. So, I'm uh, gonna take him out of the pool right away and not have to worry too much about it, but Maneski, ho oh ho, Mushi pulls out the partner. And that's one thing about playing against Mushi, you never know what hero he might pull out of that gigantic hat of his. And uh, this time it's going to be a Puckner. It could screw with Lina pretty heavily. Mushi has a plan. You don't just give away Lina without having a plan. And I do believe uh, this Puckner is part of that plan. It's a best of five, ladies and gents. There is going to be lots of Dota. And I do not believe either team will be going down 3-0. But hey, the Caster Curse is something that actually does work. So by me saying that, some team probably is going to get stopped 3-0 now. But hey... It, uh, it's gonna, it's definitely going to be a interesting matchup. And, uh, for you guys that are wondering, it is, it is, uh, I, I do believe it's a Grand Final BO5. I could just check it out very quickly. I am so used to Grand Finals being best of five. Might be just a slip of the tongue. MDL might run things differently. Let me go check it very quickly. Where is it? It's a best of five. All right, guys, I wasn't wrong about that. So, uh, thank you guys for clarifying, though. <clears throat> it's a simple mistake to make and uh, in this case it wasn't a mistake so yay yeah thank you guys for uh, tuning in it's definitely going to be an interesting definitely going to be an interesting matchup here Beastmaster partner wow a lot of uh, a lot of good old old school here from Mushi the, the other day we got to see some of his shadow feed a lot of people were giving Mushi the hate but in the end yeah Turn out, turns out that Mushi is pretty good at Dota 2. Alright. So, Clutch Gamers still thinking. Down to their last 10 seconds, they're gonna go with Anti Mage. You know, it's, I wouldn't say it's a no brainer, but it is really strong against Pugna. The guy has the high, one of the highest in gains in the, in the game. I, I think he has the highest in game. Uh, in gain in the game. Wow, that's a tongue twister if I've ever seen one. Uh, but yeah, Anti Mage gonna be played by Canal Autis. Hopefully, once they load into the game, we will have the proper names because these are killing me. I've got a Counter-Strike player on that Ogre Magi, so... Hey! If you're coming from Counter-Strike Professional Gaming, it's uh, it's pretty... I, I guess Ogre Magi is a good hero to start out with, you know, just spam that Ignite. And, yeah, pump Bloodlust on your carry player. Shouldn't be too difficult. But, uh, yeah, Adam is going to be playing on the Tusca, so I am excited. Lots of fun stuff going to be happening here in this game. We are facing, like I said, a best of five. Boy, it's been a while since I cast one of these uh, babies. So it's going to be quite a treat. And uh, yeah. Alright, we'll see how th things turn out here in this game. Going to wait for the players to load in. And yeah, we're going to hop right into the battle. Load in, come on. Load in. Still gotta see the, the silly towers bugging out in the draft. Alright. Alrighty. Alright, here we go. Finally, the Street Fighter takes effect. <clears throat> Alright, Blonde Lena. Interesting set of hats here. Alright, here we go. Tower level bug in draft. Damn, this guy is at 194. Okay. The other day I saw... Oh, wow, this guy. No battle pass. Carried by a team, bro. Alrighty, look at me. Got the new cursor as well. From the upcoming TI compendium. I'm excited. I love the water team. Uh, it's, it's my favorite element. Just gotta say, there's a little thing out there. So all the things are really my style this year. This is gonna be a great TI, guys. Looking forward to it. But uh, for now, we are in MDLs, Southeast Asia's 
grand final. And we'll be looking at this, uh, <clears throat> so. Oh, that's not good. Keyboard's not working. All right, uh, I'm going to have to pull out the good old Liquipedia so that we don't make any mistakes because the game is not giving me the same, not giving me the same names as I am expecting. I already know what the guys on Maneski are, but uh, all right, so we're going to have the mid laner, going to play by Magnus, oh no, hey, Lina, going to play, wait, Magnus going to be played by Rappi, okay, yeah, Rappi is going to be on Magnus, we've got anti mage played by Gabby, got Amel playing Lina, fly solo on, well, Triant, and Boombax going to be on the Ogre Magi, oh, it could be Kozera, the Counter-Strike player, but who knows, who knows, on the side of the Dyer, we have Maneski, the uh, now Malaysian organization headed by Mr. Mushi, the overlord of Southeast Asia, the you can almost say the taskmaster, the sender of upstairs. We got him on the partner. Dun dun dun. And uh, on, on the uh, side of the carry roll, we have Raging Potato play, the, playing the Terror Blade. Ninja Boogie on the Crystal Maiden, Bulletproof, also known as Mag for you CIS fanboys. And Adam I'm playing the Tusker with a pretty cool side do there. And an eye patch. Definitely going to be looking forward to this game a lot. This 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 draft screams aggression right here. This draft seems uh, screams. All right, we want to sit back a little bit, maybe harass your mid lane, but ultimately we're going to be chilling. We're going to be waiting, healing up our towers where possible, and then taking the fight once this guy hits 3 a.m. This is a BO5. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> Oh, Adam. Oh. Wow, Ninja Boogie. Let us win. Here we go. This anti mage is going to be stacked. There's Bloodlust, there's Living Armor, there's Empower. You know, there's probably a Vlad Zora in there somewhere as well, so. Gotta be looking out for that. Oh, Ninja Boogie waving the white flag. I thought he was Filipino. Kappa. All right, Lena, loading back into the game now. Here we go. Okie dokie, guys. We're gonna start the game with a smoke, and I, like I said, the Radiant are going to be clutch gamers. They are not um, tagged in their official name, so I'll do my best to remember who they are. It's Rappy on the mag. We have Gabby on the carry. We got uh, Amel on the Lena. We got Fly Solo. Who shout out to him is using his name. And of course, we got Ogre Magi played by Boombax, also known as Kozera. I'm definitely going to mess it up later on, but hey, can you blame me? Of course, Trian Protector, uh, going to be played by two of the greats in Dota. We got Fly and Solo combined into one very powerful player. Alrighty. <clears throat> Offlane third pick, DY. So this guy setting his name into... Uh, a pup order, I can almost say. Why does this show net worth advantage? Did they deward? They didn't deward anything. I don't know why it, it shows net worth advantage. Alright, so we are going to be smoking and looking for a gank here. Adam's gonna lead the charge, a snowball in onto Mr. Canal Otis. It's probably not gonna be a kill, but they're gonna be able to chase him away from this rune. And uh, right now, they're still waiting to see who they can jump on. It's going to be Tree and Protector. It's going to be a nice little piece of... Uh, nice little piece of... Uh, food here. They're not going to get... Nope. They're going to go grab the Bounty Rune and uh, start off with a aggressive tri lane. But unfortunately, they do lose their Rune up top as well. So that little bit of... Uh, that little bit of larceny not working out in their favor. Adam, still going to be hiding behind the trees there. There is going to be a scouting tree but uh, crystal maidens come prepared ninja boogie coming with a sentry ward mushy's lane is going to be a little bit difficult though i think with the ogre constantly up in his face but bloodlust level one so gonna have to wait till level two before you can deploy the shenanigans so for now we are just going to be chilling oh he ate the only tree that could give him a uh, regen so might be trouble the shots coming out adam blocking him in there is going to be invis in seven seconds but is it going to be enough crystal maiden has another frostbite here that's going to be first blood the snowball lands and it is first blood for Ninja Boogie. 
the crystal maiden gonna be happy gonna get themselves a new pair of jimmy shoes the shoes do kill all righty raging potato already deploying the metamorphosis getting that cs advantage uh, up against the anti mage so starting rough clutch gamer is gonna be trailing one kill and meanwhile in the middle lane mushy dominating here on the cs charts eight to two damn you don't mess with the Grandmaster of Southeast Asia, Mushy. But uh, yeah, Clutch Gamers. Gonna have to clutch it for... Yeah, for the underdogs, yeah? We got Bulletproof. Or oh, Mag from... Uh, Mag from Vega. We're playing against the... Rappy Magnus. See how well it does uh, work out for them. And Team H versus his brother, you can almost say. Uh, back in Warcraft 3, these guys were... Alternate models for each other, so pretty damn cool. Here we go, the reflection gonna start burning away the anti mage's mana. Terrorblade, a pretty good combo. Oh, well, um, Terrorblade, a pretty good counter against the anti mage because he uses his own power against him. So, right now, gonna be pretty interesting. Ooh, nice little trap there. Locks out the Ogre Magi, but uh, I thought he would, if he was gonna run for the rune, it would, be, it would have been a little cool, but. Yeah, Trium Protector doing nothing against Terrorblade's 11 armor, <laughs> level 2. It's going to be feeling pretty comfortable here. Lina already forced to use the Shrine with uh, with the presence of that partner with the Arcane Rune and the Crystal Maiden's Aura. It's going to be very difficult for him to stay afloat in the lane. Especially if partner drops a ward behind the, behind, the, behind the creep wave here. Spamming Dragon Slave to harass could be more counterproductive than not. So I'd uh, really like to see how this one pans out. But right now... We are looking at another punch here from the Triad, but it's going to do very little damage because, uh, like I said, 11 armor, not something you want to sneeze at. Oh, we have the Shards going to be trapping him in, but uh, Kozera or Boombax is going to be pretty tanky here, so not going to fall. And uh, Ninja Boogie going to begin a pull here to the side, and we'll see how things pan out from here. Looks like Lina taking up the high ground here. Ooh, drops the Decrepify, going to nuke him once, Nether Strike, I mean Nether Blast. Oh, Mushi, whoa, 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 Mushi, is your keyboard broken? <laughs> whoa, 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 Mushi. Okay, okay. I, I am. I'm glad I caught that one. But uh, yeah, they do get the ogre magi with the second use of metamorphosis, and uh, well, interesting choice, uh, Mushi. I get aggression, but that was uh, a <laughs> tad aggressive. Dodged the LSA, but uh, got hit by the tower three times. Shame, he was actually in a very big lead, but now trailing 19 to 2 here. Whoa, 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 Mag! Gotta force out the skewer here from Mag, maybe. But uh, I, I think I might have to call Mag Bulletproof because there's actual Mag in this game, so I'm probably gonna have to just call him Mag. Uh, Bulletproof, damn it. But yeah, uh, interesting play by Mushi, definitely. Throwing out the Dragon Slave there, Mushi finds himself a haste rune. We're gonna have Adam repping around now. Gonna look to roll in. Oh, the Lina a little bit too far off, and here we go. The Decrepify. No, nope. is there gonna be a Decrepify? There's gonna be a, there's gonna be a block off here. But the Living Armor gonna make things a little bit difficult for Adam. The LSA thinking about it. Another Nano Blast. But hey, we got some raindrops. So what is magic? Thinking. Oh, that another Decrepify is gonna come out. Gonna nuke it. There's gonna be a shards in. There's the stun, but not enough. Fearing the LSA under the tower. Mushi learns his lesson. It's going to back off now. But uh, yeah, Lina. The raindrops being absolute value items there. Gonna keep her afloat in this gank. And uh, they could be smoking up here. There is Crystal Maiden with the bong. Could puff and huff. But they're gonna shrine up for now and keep things interesting. Meanwhile, Raging Potato or the Terror Blade. Using his illusions, microing it to last hit against the tree and protector, who is doing very little harassment damage to him. 11 armor, pretty decent. Woohoo! Best sound in the name. <laughs> best sound in the game. Uh, one of the best sounds, actually. The best one being anti mage hitting a range creep. Can you just listen to that sound in your mind? It's ASMR, man, I tell you. Alright. Wow. Two points into crap fire now. Mushy. Not getting any points in the nether ward for now. Uh, that's more a, of a late game investment. Going to be tacking into that later. Whoa! Okay, Magnus diving deep in there. Not expecting that kill, to be honest, even without the roar, I think it looked really difficult to pull off. But uh, once again, we find another hero behind enemy lines, and uh, <laughs> I don't know what he was doing there. He had no reverse polarity, so I don't know what he was doing there. 
happened. I killed that shouldn't happen, but my bad for missing it. And that image uh, back onto the farm board is actually sitting at 33 right at the top there. Terrorblade trailing just one CS, so we've got really a really heavily contested CS chart right now. But the uh, top three are the well, top three of them are from the Radiant, so it's gonna be a little bit rough if if it keeps on like this. Maneski maybe two kills ahead, but it's still something they don't want to trail behind for too long. All right, got ourselves an invisibility here for the Lina, and with that, Laguna Blade could be killing off Mushi here. I do not know if he has actually seen this. Lina, I think Lina popped the, yeah, she popped it. Okay, yeah, gonna kill his sister. So we got some sibling rivalry here. Oh, the greed though could cost her her life as a result. But here comes the living armor. Lina probably gonna fall here. Could have bottled up. Oh, gonna go for the mushy kill instead. Ah, Mel. Very, very aggressive here on the leader. Had the magic stick charges. Really trying to bait in the little partner. But uh, not gonna be able to do it. And in the end, scalling a solo kill on the sister. Pretty good stuff. Uh, Mushi just gonna keep up the gank here, keep the push going. The partner is gonna apply a lot of pressure to towers, especially with the terror blade thrown in. It's going to be a rough, rough. Uh, rough, rough time if they do lose any uh, key heroes in this, uh, well, close to their base. So Magnus already picking up Arcanes and Infused Raindrops building towards the Blink Dagger. Meanwhile, uh, Beastmaster Mag is uh, building towards the book there. So going for higher studies. We got Smoke here on Lina. Gotta throw out another Dragon Slave, but that's just an Ogre that's going to be sitting up top on the high ground. Alright, partner, dropping up server ward on the high ground. So Mushi, in the mid that wards. What a man. But uh Terrorblade actually soloing up pretty well against the anti-mage, being able to sit there and get some farm. The reflection constantly gonna be pushing the anti-mage back, and I think he will be keeping that mana break at one for now. It's very annoying to have to deal with that constantly. The reflection, 50 mana. Gonna be able to throw that out very quickly. And now the haste rune from the Lena scouting out some targets, getting arcane boots. So building towards the Bloodstone. Very standard build up here. <clears throat> Alright. Magnus. Skipping up on RP for now. Gonna opt for juicier abilities. He has actually saved this. No, he hasn't saved this skill point. My math. Oof. But uh, Mag does have the raw here. We got Terror Blade sitting in the wake there as well. Nice little block off there by Adam. They're gonna go in and now... Hey, hey, hey. Oh, Raging Potato is going to be able to deploy that Metamorphosis, and here comes the five man guys. Mushi is going to start activating his trap cards and uh, set that push going. We've got that Beastmaster Aura at level two. We've got the roll in here. Very aggressive movement from Adam. It's going to cost him his life, most likely. Yeah, Laguna Blade will just see to him. And uh, that's the Skewer, nearly defeating that uh, the purpose of having Lena there. But in the end, Adam went in a little too ham there on that Lena, costing him. Oh, his own life as well as that push for his team. A living armor already gonna start slowing down his push. Like I mentioned, the Trium Protector taking this uh, mid XP gonna be able to build that living armor early. Yeah, it's going to allow them to really stall out a push, and that really hurts a terrible draft whenever you can't actually get that going. And uh, Metamorphosis ends, so we're gonna have to wait a little bit more before we can get another push going. So we're about to hit the 10 minute mark. Let's look at the net worth. Um, no surprises that Lena is right on top. As usual, uh, 4,100 gold and uh, anti mage trailing just a little bit behind at 3,007. So the net worth is going to be favoring uh, the Radiant, if you can see up top on that green little bar there. 1,000 gold in favor of uh, the boys from the Philippines. <coughs> Terror Blade, though, is uh, really going to be a real problem if, uh, even with this early. Well, this early slow start, you can almost say. The bird's gonna be flying in to the side there, watching out for any TP rotations. It looks like Magnus is thinking about making something happen here, but he's gonna take a roll right to the face there. It could be dangerous, the RP is still not available. So, okay, not dangerous, just kidding. Overgrowth is not available as well, but Fly Solo loses all his trees, no! Gonna get brought down, Beastmaster. Axis him, that's it, that's him. Going down, that's a nice little pickup there as well. An accidental kill, you can almost say. Environmental damage coming into play. Uh, Alright, Cozera looking for 
the pick here on Adam. Adam gonna throw out the shots again. It's not gonna be a kill. He has opted for more points in the Oh, and the snow shots. Ninja Boogie outrunning the Crystal Maiden. Nope, doesn't get out of there as Canal chops down the tree, hiding between uh between them, and that's gonna be a kill there on the poor maiden. Once again, the boogie feeds. And uh, anti mage gets another kill on the board there. Two top net worth heroes on the side of the Radiant and the Beastmaster actually going to be the top net worth for the Dire. So step it up, carry, step it up, fly solo. Thinking about that overgrowth, just uh, scaring with the uh, fake outs here. Not going to actually commit to it right now. The score is 4 to 5 to tier 1 tower. About to fall by the LSA coming in. Nice little ball stop here, but it's not going to be enough. The Terror Blade falls. He is not going to get the Thunder off in time. I felt Adam gave him a little bit of a... Uh, I felt that Adam gave him a little bit of a timing window to try and go for it. But LSA does stun for a pretty damn long time. So, not going to happen here. 2.2 seconds stun is a pretty, pretty long duration. So, 6 to 5 now is a kill score. That Radiant uh, net worth advantage is skyrocketing to a 2,000 lead now. Terrorblade back into the fray. Uh, one of Terrorblade's biggest uh, pet peeves is, of course, burst damage. Oh man. Radiant and their Oracle Light sensors are gonna scan for the incoming gank, but Rappy's gonna rock right into it. The Maiden is there, the Nova as well gives the vision, and the roll in will be, uh, yeah, will be guaranteed. And now Ninja Boogie gonna deploy that ultimate, takes him out. Mushy. Uh, looking for that pick as well with the light train, but not gonna be necessary. They're gonna bring they're gonna bring down the tier one tower. Probably gonna be a trade here as we do see the anti-mage making a move up top, blinking onto the terror blade illusion. And this tower does look all but uh, gone here for Mineski as well. So the kill score has been uh, equalized and they're gonna take this chance to push that mid tier one as well while holding on to that tier one up top themselves. It the Raiden don't really have as good as a pushing lineup, so it could be possible that uh, they lose another tier 1 and trade 2 for 1 instead. Oh, uh, Mushi Illusion does detect this coming in. The shots comes out, blocks off the, uh, ticks off the raindrop. So it could be a movement here. They could try with a Dragon Slave, a real problem. I'm really surprised Mushi hasn't gone for more Nether Ward or at least just one. But really, really favoring the Decrapify here. But uh, yeah, gonna be able to chunk out the damage onto the tower. Has picked up a Midas as well, not going for the Arc... Oh. The arcanes into mechanism that I'm seeing a lot from partners or even the Aghanim Scepter upgrade. So right now they're gonna buff up their towers, give it the Bloodlust, give it the Living Armor, repair it up a little bit and uh, should be in tip top shape soon enough because we have a level 4 Living Armor. Look at that heal. Just regenning that tower ASAP. So going to be really scary here if uh, Maneski can't get a push going because that's how their lineup works you know you have that mag you have that partner oh, you have that beast master you have the partner and you really want to get that push going give the terror blade map space as well as some extra goal from the towers allowing him to get to the manta the yasha really speeds up his farm so <laughs> so right now okay we got fly solo getting caught out you know this is the solo part of him taking play <laughs> Uh, Ninja Boogie. They're gonna throw out the dust at Adam. Gonna corner him. Uh, the tree is gonna be in a lot of trouble. They're gonna get sharded up. Mushi gonna get some mana back as well. Yum. As he is at full health. So a little bit of that life drain effect. Uh, side effect from the life drain taking play. And uh, Mushi gets a kill. Still though, the, uh, these two heroes are farming out of their minds. There's Lina as well as the Anti-Mage. Very, very farmed. Bloodstone on the way here. 3,000 gold in the Lina's coffers right now. Pretty crazy. And uh, Terrorblade just using its clones there to do its work for him. Hey look, the tower's nearly at full health, but uh, Mushi gonna see to that. Drop bombs on it every once in a while. And uh, hopefully keep it down low enough. Mag has that double damage. Oh no, Canel! In trouble here, there is a double damage here. So it's gonna kick him in the face. Yes, they do. Mag finds the anti-mage, scores big here for Maneski. And uh, Ogre Magi, you have a TP scroll, so use it. Yeah, he's gonna use it, he's gonna pop out of there. The tower is gonna be brought down, and I love how we can see Allied chat now. That's cool, that's so cool. 15 to 29, so they do actually ping out of time. So did someone use Anauti? Uh, nope, I don't know why they ping out the time, all right. 
not sure why they're paying out the time there, but uh, could be potential Roshan maybe, or were they accounting for something? I don't know. But now their smoke comes out here for... Or maybe maybe they're timing the glyph. Dire... No? They're not timing the glyph, really. Okay, I'm not really sure what they were doing that for, but... Mushi, uh, the Midas is allowing him to keep up with the farm here. He's now actually got back to the mechanism. He will be... Oh no, the RP though, catching Mag on the top lane, but here comes the reflection. It's a mess! The LSA gonna be off the mark there. Rappy actually letting... Uh, well, almost costing his team to kill and letting Adam TP out of there. But an RP for a Tusca. And Maski will take that any time of the day. And uh, that's five men uh, being rotated top for a Tusca kill. So it's going to be uh, it's, it's going to be different uh, from here on out. They spent some big ultimates. Maneski knows that RP is down, so they're gonna feel a little bit more bold with a tower push. You expect some movements down. You already see a bottom push here coming out from Maneski. Raging Potato as well as the partner gonna head down to the bottom lane. Just kidding, going top. So not gonna risk it. Magnus is out, so even without RP, a big threat. But hey, Midas is up again. Mushy. It's got it's got might. he's got farm to do. He's got no time for that pushing nonsense. The only thing he's gonna be pushing is his bank account numbers upward. Ninja Boogie, meanwhile, gonna be staying the poor girl. No, actually, not really. The Trian is the real poor one. Living with nature and all that has really cost him a few bucks here and there. Uh, get yourself a bath, man. You disgust me. Not you, Fanny. Get out of the way. Alright. Ninja Boogie. Scooting around. Canal has that Battle Fury already, sees a Crystal Maiden across the, the lane there, really thinks about jumping onto her. Hot-Blooded Mill, Anti-Mages, you know, tasty little morsel over here, really wants a free pickings, but you know, gotta be careful, respect the lonely support sometimes, Ninja Boogie, although he was completely alone there, so it could have just died. Straight up, but uh, Beastmaster gonna find this Lina very, very quick here. And now the Crystal Maiden gonna take our revenge on the sister. But hey, there's the Soldoku Sapuku coming out from the Lina. Gonna play him. Challenging Matt's puzzle with herself. Takes herself out. Denies that kill. Respawns in three seconds. No biggie. But now that Bloodstone denies on, uh, it's on a long cooldown. It's got that two minute, 80, 280 second cooldown now. It's gonna be a really long time before she can cut herself again. Alrighty, Adam, what's he looking at? Looking at a Blink Dagger, so... Really wants to keep up that mobility, jump in and uh, snowball save their Terror Blade. I think that's going to be the game plan here, for sure. This Anti-Mage is looking really scary though, with the ultimate, ultimate cleave here from Battle Fury and the Empower. Oh no! Oh no, Mushi. Oh no, Mushi. They RP'd him though! That, that part's kind of worth it, I guess. Mushi is one of their core players. Very important to take him out. Now Lina gonna do the thing what Lina does. Oh, they're gonna look for that pick here on the Crystal Maiden. Not gonna be successful as they do pull a lot of Mineski TPs. We're already looking at a potentially great series here. 8 to 8, 19 minutes in. We've only got a slight 2k lead here for the Radiant. Not going to be too crazy. I like it. I like this game so far. Shrine's gonna be topped up. What are we looking at? Are we looking at Roshan? Wow, a bold move here from Maneski. Going to be challenging Roshan this early in the match. 19 minutes in, they're going to be pounding hard and fast. They got book number two here. Mag has been really keeping up on that net worth and uh, Terrorblade is going to land his damage here. The Dire are dropping a scan just in case the Radiant were thinking about some smoke play. But in the end, it's going to be a... It's going to be a GTA gone right. Grand Theft Aegis does... And in success here for the Radiant, they ping the timer here. It is so damn cool to be able to see that now. And uh, the Radiant though, they still have a huge lead. That Anti-Mage is really sapping up all that team farm. They have all that farm on the Anti-Mage right now. 11,000, almost 12k on this guy. Really, really farmed on the Anti-Mage. It could be a problem later on here for Team Maneski, but they are going to try and brute force their way into a tier 2 tower right now. But Anti-Mage doesn't look like he's about to stop anytime soon. The Frostbite though will lock down the anti-mage a little bit, but now they're going to be TPing back and uh, yeah, all the clutch gamers 
are going to retreat back, back to the fortifications and stay behind the castle walls for now and uh, get back to farm. We already got four stuff, we got bloodstone. And to match with the Vladimir's offering, got that Yasha as well. So the Mantis style gonna be on the way, gonna be able to disjoint that. Well, not disjoint, but remove the Decraptify, remove Frostbite. A lot of very powerful uh, applications for that Manta. So very important that he picks it up soon. Ninja Boogie, still buying wards, poor guy. Alrighty, what's uh what's looking up here? Oh yeah, we got we got Adam off to pick up his blink dagger, so that is nice. You'll see some big plays hopefully. Got Terrorblade keeping up with farm, but really not enough for him to do enough uh well, enough work right now. He's got the Manta style recipe. He's still working towards the ultimate orb. There's just so much more money on the radiant though. So much more. This anti mage is super stacked because of the empower hacks with the battle fury. Just clears creep wave so quickly. And yes, Lina isn't a melee hero, but any bit of damage is just amplified. Any damage boost is just amplified on her because of how fast she attacks, even without help. And I think that's one of the strong points about Lina. She's got a good early game. She bursts you down really hard. And then she can still burst you in the late mid game, but she has that right click to supplement that as well to break buildings. She's just a hero that does a lot right now. And uh, it's very scary to face, and I love this Frozen Sigil, slowing down the Ancients, attack speed, allowing Terrorblade to mow through them with the help of Machine here. Already got that Grand and Greaves online, so should be working with, working his way towards the Aghanim Scepter here, or maybe the Aether Lens. Could have, uh, could have a really strong time. I actually haven't looked at... I haven't actually looked at the talents on a Pugna yet, and now... Looking at them, it is very interesting. You know, if he does pick up that extra 0 0.05 Netherwart damage per mana, it could really take out the Lina if she's not careful. Because right now, sitting at a 1.75 at max level, another 0 0.5 could be a problem. I mean, Laguna Blade is not cheap. 420, yeah, you're gonna blaze yourself up with that, with the the Crapify. So, uh, I mean, with the Netherwart. So, something that the Lina will have to watch out for. I think she definitely has to go for BKB this game, but she's gonna be cheating out a Boots of Travel first. The Sentry Ward, though, is gonna scout out Fly Solo. Nope. Crack, not gonna. Not going to happen here. The Frostbite is gonna come, but Fly Solo taking a huge chunking here. Here comes the Nether Ward. It is level 3, it does a decent amount of damage. Beastmaster looking for the pick here. He has that vision, but the LSA is going to land on to Mag, so he's gonna he's gonna be stunned and knocked back for a bit. So we're gonna have no kills for now. Evasion does is picked up here by the anti mage, so going to be able to avoid a lot of the terribly incoming damage and canal Otis with the Empower gonna start. Chunking away at the tower, 151 bonus damage here, and at that attack speed, it is quite something. Here comes the mana burn though, onto Mag, so he's out of mana, out of juice. No more, uh, no more, no more skills he can really throw out here. So, Raging Potato, I think it's time to run away. Yes, you have ages, but still, don't test fate like that. They can kill you two times, three times over. You gotta really respect the damage here. That could come out from Clutch Gamers. So, what are we looking at? 16,000 net worth on Anti-Mage. I don't think we sus well, expected anything less at this point. It's just crazy how fast the Anti-Mage farms. Even without the Empower. Imagine with the Empower, he just mows through everything. Does so much damage in fights. It's pretty crazy. And that's why Magnus is banned against a lot of teams these days. That hero just offers too much potential. And with melee, melee cores being so popular in this meta game, it's just something that you have to watch out for. I love that he's going for the Aghanim Scepter, it will stop that Beastmaster Raw initiation, which they are going to try now on this anti-mage. Here they go, he has used his blink, there we go, we're gonna go right in there, roll on him, it's a slumber party here from Mr. Anti-Fun, but he's gonna blink up top, looking for that TP, they might just still get away though, he is so damn fast, so damn tanky, and he just ports out of there, and they used a lot of skills to try and kill him, but weren't able to burn his mana fast enough, and anti mage pieces out there, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, about to hit that Aghanim Scepter, so why don't you shout in your own face? It is uh, going to be happening soon. Meanwhile, how's Buckner looking at? It's got an ultimate orb, I think this could evolve into a hex maybe. Probably a hex, needs more lockdown. Uh, the team right now a little bit lacking, apart from that Beastmaster. So really want to have to do that one. That fly solo. This uh, this push lineup really not uh, not showing results. I gotta say, this 
Trium Protector just slamming the door on the strategy. I can almost say that. Anti Mage now uh, taking to the Dire Jungle and just uh, pocketing some of that ancient money. All good. Tower tier 2. Gonna fall. Anti Mage contribution. Kaching! Oh, blinked into the Dire Scan. That's gonna be a ding 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 ding. Coming out here from the Dire. And uh, we're gonna be taking up the high ground. So back in the fortifications, this pushing lineup. Getting pushed back into their own base. Losing all your tier 2s already. And the enemy tier 2s healthy as kale. Interesting. Mm. Healthy as kale. Adam. Alright, Terrorblade picks up that 200 health talent now. Level 15. Still really behind there. You look at this anti mage. Level 22, this guy. Holy crap. Alright, Lena, what's up? Alright, we've got someone that dropped his board, maybe. Alright guys, I think I can turn up the game sounds for you guys a little bit. It was uh it was turned down a little bit too low on my system. Sorry. One thing about the Academy's upgrade on anti mage though is that the Sunder will not will not be blocked. So that's something interesting to note as well, but uh Pugna could potentially I mean, it's going to be so easy to break, right, with the life drain. The range is pretty long, it's going to be easy to break the Lincolns. It's not the best form of protection against anti-mage. We'll have to see. We will have to see. Alright, uh, I don't know what the reason for the pause is. FPS drop. Alright, so we're going to have some FPS drops. Hopefully they resolve those issues and... We have ourselves some action back in again, but for now, I'm not. I'm not feeling this part. Nah, gotta tell you, I'm just waiting for Lena to kill herself. Maybe that that will that will really justify the partner pick. But for now, we're sitting at a four thousand six hundred net, seven thousand six hundred net worth advantage and a ten thousand XP gain. Wow, XP difference. That's really crazy. And look at how far the dire is trailing and uh, the Aegis though <clears throat> the Aegis though has been reclaimed so they haven't really used this too much and we got more FPS drops going so oh no this could be the start of a I don't know usually you know if your systems go bad or something it could really throw you off the game a long pause as well could really throw you off that fire that you have uh, Accumulated almost uh, the momentum. Yeah, that's what I was looking for the momentum And uh, really hope it doesn't throw clutch gamers off their game. They're doing so well in this match right now It's only 8 to 8. It's not the most crazy It's not the most crazy lead, but if you look at the XP and the net worth it just tells you a really good story All right Alright, let's check out some items. And in the worst case, we will check out effigies. Magnus, gonna have that Shadow Blade on him. Uh, has the Hand of Midas as well, being able to pick up more money along with that 90 gold per minute GPM thing. It's gonna be it's gonna be pretty good for his money, his cash flow. You got Ogre Magi as well on that 60 gold per minute payment plan. 50 damage now on the Lena. A lot of Elenas have been opting towards this 50 and really skipping out on the 30 second cooldown. Uh, death time at cooldown because they realize they haven't been dying as much because if you kill the enemies you won't die as much so yeah anti mage gonna say yep they're on the way ninja boogie hits them with the no probs for you guys just tuning in it's going to be a best of five guys uh, the reason why we kind of reflect it up top i think is because the matches are not ticketed just yet so you're gonna have to bear with us with regards to the talent uh well no, i mean with regards to the match score can we say? But it's the best of five, it just confirmed, I checked it, and uh, they were confirmed at the start of the game as well. So, yep, best of five. Right, Ninja Boogie. 
got that Midas at last, so Crystal Maiden finally gonna get her money cash flow coming in. And uh, like I said, Pugna probably gonna go for the Hex here. Book 3 already done for Mag. And uh, Terrorblade needs a, needs a couple more items. I think he really needs that BKB to be super threatening in the team fights. We got Dragonlance and Manta style now, but after the Scuddy, a BKB is definitely needed here. To stay alive in the fights. The Solar Crest, I'm surprised no teams have picked it up just yet. Uh, Adam is working on it, but uh, no one else really is picking up a Solar Crest, so it's definitely something to consider as well. Pugna. Alright, I think we've talked about everything that could be talked about in terms of items, but uh, we can look at FPGs, it's just gonna be Battle Cup. Kamehameha. Why can't I? Magnus reconnects. Thank you. Thank you. I was about to run out of stuff to blabber about. <clears throat> Alright, this anti mage. We'll see how it works out for him. He has the Acumen Scepter, but it does. It, it could it could give him a false sense of security. There is a lot of point target on Dyer, so it might not be as useful as you think he is. Right. Back to the farm fest. Where were we? We got the Hurricane Pike and Lena. So going for the extra range, you know, you don't usually see it as much, but against Beastmaster Tasca, you want to get that distance between them. And it's a it's a reasonable pickup. You know, getting that Dragon Lance, getting that range bonus. Look at her attack range right now. Pretty crazy. Just clearing out the creep wave and uh, we're looking at Cosera. Oh, boom backs on that Ogre Magi. Magnus looking for a pick as well. All the dire heroes are still sticking around on their side. We have got a two pair over here as well. Split pushing. And uh, I think Clutch Gamers are expecting a push incoming. No Observer Wards in the meantime, but they are expecting something coming this way. And uh, they're gonna smoke up behind the leader. They're gonna find Beastmaster. Beastmaster though. Oh no, he breaks the thing. The Ogre. Oh, the blink though. Oh, Mag! And Ninja Boogie with the immediate timer, but Mag with the Ninja Reflexes dodging that RP. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be 2802. So the next time the RP is available is in 100 seconds. The mental clock starts ticking, and now Maneski know to strike here. Fly solo and Ogre caught out. This is a invisible beast master. They're gonna find that treant. They're gonna look for another target here. Mag, patience from Mag. They're just gonna find another ogre. He was waiting for Alina to walk in, but they are just gonna cut losses here, Clutch Gamers. They're gonna give up two. And now Maneski looking for a push here. What a bait, what a blink from Mag. Getting that big one for his team. But hey, Lina doing Lina things here in top lane, already chipping this tower down real low. Meanwhile, Mushi getting brought down here by the Magic Hater. And uh, yeah. But Mushi has that respawn talent put in and we'll look at the tier 3 tower guys. Brought down by the Lina. She's frostbitten up by the sister though. Canal is gonna run away. Lina is gonna pop the spells and she will be out of there. So tier 3 tower falls. They don't even get the tier 2. They get two support kills, but is it worth it? This retting line up here for the Radiant, surprisingly powerful. And because he didn't finish off the tower completely, look at that. It's gonna be topped right up there with the Treant armor. So Coming out on top, the Radiant, definitely. You look at that 11,000 net worth lead. The Shrine's already gone, thanks to the Anti-Mage. And the other one, not going to be long for the world as well. So Canal, Mr. Canal here, or Gabby on the Anti-Mage. Feeling pretty good about himself there. The Bash shows up. Mushi really unable to do much here. <clears throat> but, uh, right now. Scary stuff here from... Uh, from the Radiant Clutch Gamers looking really strong in this game. Number one, the bird gonna fly over the Rosh Pit. Roshan will be respawning in 23 seconds, so they probably will see this. We'll see it. I uh, know the bird times out in 10 seconds, but they will have the sigil in there, which times out as well. So they're gonna look for a big pick here. It's gonna be only fly solo though. It's not gonna be enough. The punch comes in. They're gonna cut down the trees again. They're gonna try for that pick. And with that gem of true sight, they do pick off the big tree. And uh, they will deforestate. But is it gonna be enough? 
score now. It's 9, it's to 11. Uh, but it is still a 13,000 net worth and losing the courier, definitely not helpful there. Can I, let me try and select the courier. I can't select the courier, guys. I used to be able to select it with my own hotkey, but... That's 2,000, 2000 gold worth of stuff on that courier, so... I don't know what the issue is here, but... Uh, I do believe it was Terrorblades... Most of Terrorblades uh, Scardy on that, so... Yeah, I do believe so. A roll in here, looking for the anti-mage, but a blink away immediately. So anti-mage not gonna be able to caught, get caught out here. The hex is almost ready for Pugna. He can just buy it now. He just needs to get to the secret shop. Mushy still working towards that nether ward damage. We're gonna have that very soon. And uh, I'm gonna see the Lena Lena tick herself down. She has got herself a Lincoln's to make herself more resistant to the point targetness of the Dire Squad right now. And uh, the hex now gets deployed here for Mushi. Gonna have that ability to hex them, hex them down. But has to be careful not to hex himself, as the, the anti mage does have the scepter of mag hating, magic hating. <clears throat> Panamidas still gonna be really big value here for Mushi. Terrorblade still holding lines as far as possible. Ninja Boogie getting that money. Gotta get to that dream. The 20, level 20 talent. The 120 gold per minute. Could go for the respawn time, but the 120 gold is just so damn good. Beastmaster Hawk though. Gotta really like the Dire Vision game here. They just know they can keep tabs on the key objectives here and there. Being able to pounce on the enemy like that is very effective. Mushy. I really don't want to be too far up here. Uh, doesn't have a blink dagger or any form of escape here apart from his high base move speed, but that's not gonna cut it when it comes to Mr. Ninja and Lena over here. Gonna be very powerful, the birds though, we'll scout it, Canal was looking forward for some picks, but not gonna fight him. And the courier being in the, de uh, in the dead zone for a couple of seconds here is going to hold back on that Scardy, but the Terrorblade is ready to pick it up now. <clears throat> Oh, here comes the anti-mage. Gotta be banging away at that Roshan. It's not gonna be a contested one as well, so the boss raid goes the way of the Radiant. It's gonna be 32-57. And uh, kill score still staying, staying static for now, but that uh, net worth advantage just completely squeezing out the red bar right now. 15,000 net worth advantage. The push strategy just wasn't cutting it. And uh, they are suffering now. They're paying with that net worth loss. Losing to tier 3 up top does break the shield generators here for the shrines. So they lose even more map advantage. It was huge there for the Lena to get the pick. Aghanim Scepter means this anti-mage, I don't know how they're going to kill him. Uh, it's definitely going to be a problem dealing with an anti-mage, especially as punk now. You know, you have so much mana to just blow your own team up. Now you have to be very careful. Mushi had a plan. And now he has a blink dagger. So he's got that long initiation range, but Mr. Otis over here has got two lives and he's got a whole team of superpower superpowers behind him. And uh, even then, Abyssal Blade, Mantis style, he's gonna be able to kill fools alone. Oh Adam, oh no Adam, gonna go into that snowball. Gonna look for him. But he's gonna roll himself mag! Did you not get the memo? Oh, here comes the Abyssal Blade though. They're gonna try and get that anti mage He's taking no damage, he's just cleaving through Adam. Not even targeting Adam himself, but now triple chops here will take out the Tusker. 10 to 11 now. The kill score is really favoring this anti mage. 29,000 net worth. I've never seen a Terra Blade so out farmed, but then again, anti mage was kind of cheating with the Empower, Bloodlust, and all the other good stuff. He is just immortal right now. Tusker forced to buy back into the game, and for good reason as well. Canal gonna be chased by his own illusion. Has to be real careful, as the mana burn does hurt quite a fair bit. Reflection, their only hope here against that anti mage has to use his own power against him. They're going for another tier 3 push here. Reflection, looking there, they got that reflection off. And now they're going to go for the hex. They force push in that uh, anti mage, but it's not going to be enough as he's going to have that Hurricane Pike from Lena to bail him out. But Otis, not even caring about this Terror Blade, is just going to go for it. Lena taking quite a few shots here with that. Uh, yeah, going to take a few shots here from that Terror Blade Snowball, but it's not going to be enough damage to tick her even to into any kind of dangerous levels and look at this rat right here he is looking for a pick but he's not gonna be able to find the opening 
and because of these observer wards, the Dyer have been keeping tabs here on the Radiant Heroes. It looks like we will not see a base breach for now, but this tier 3 dangerously low. And look at that, the line drawn in the sand here. Fly Solo says, we gotta go man, come on. Looks like it's just gonna be shrine time. Break down that shrine and wow, what's she building too? Whoa, Mionia. So this is a carry Lina, guys. It's not really a uh, Lina that cares too much about magical power. It's gonna let's look for throwing out those fire slash lightning balls. More of a carry build than anything. What's the bulletproof mag? Gem has not been lost just yet. Still, a dangerous game for them. They have been able to remove the wards from the enemy side of the map, uh, from their side of the map, but still, it's still a difficult. Okay, nice little blink there. They see that the anti mage has done some shenanigans. Ninja Boogie is gonna deploy a sentry ward. Oh, that's the Beastmaster. He blinks that he matters onto nothing. But uh, Mag, is, they're gonna lose their, they're gonna lose their Raxus right away. And there's nothing they can do to stop this one. Canal gonna run away. They're still looking for the pick here. The the Rex is still alive though. I'm not sure if they're gonna go back in. Yes, they are. This arms the anti mage, but it's not gonna be enough. The mana burn or the life drain coming out here onto the anti mage, breaking that Lincoln's shield. But it's not doing enough. Not doing enough right now. The Aegis is still up. The Roshan timer might be taking down soon, but they might just lose their buildings with no ability to fight back. The Reflection is there, burns out all of anti mages mana, so the Blink will not be available for him. Neither will be Abyssal Blade or the Manta. But is it going to be enough? Tower going down, Lina shooting from a million range away. There is just zero risk gaming right here. Giving away Lina might not have been a good choice here. Anti Mage going for the Rex as he's just chopping it down so fast they can't touch him. They roar him up. They try to go for it, but he's decrepified up as well. He's got another shield. He doesn't care. Look at this man. I am Anti Mage. Look at that. Four staff away. Doesn't even pop the ages. That's two sides of Rex's loss with zero risk. Zero risk. 27,000 net worth down in this game. Number one of the BO5. For Clutch Gamers versus Maneski. Looking pretty scary, these Clutch Gamers. Aegis is down. Here comes the full regen here on the AM. And uh, he's going to be able to uh, fight with full health now. Full strength. Let's see if he makes something out of it. But right now, looking pretty scary here for Maneski. They have one more side of Rex remaining. And then we're pretty much looking down the barrel of Mega Creeps and possibly the game. This Lina. There's Lena right here. Yikes. I think the consensus is you just don't give Lena. You know, this game wasn't even won by Magnus RPs or anything. It was just won by Empower. And Lena. Too much damage coming out here from both sides. Oh, uh, from the Radiant. And uh, being able to barely pierce the armor here forcing him to go for the monkey king bar instead of the bkb it's it's rough and it's almost impossible to push out as well there is a tree and protector there's lena it's very hard to chip any buildings you have to destroy it in one shot otherwise not at all and now that solar crest is up i don't know man this is looking pretty damn impossible it's gonna have to take a miracle to win this one against the stacked anti-mage they're coming up from behind and that could be the play they are looking for but adam caught off guard here oh no roar himself again mag he was really waiting for his teammates to blow that hole open but nope the anti-mage has the bkb not taking chances here gabby shuts things down and now raging potato he's gonna be pretty angry at his team fly solo one more blast will do the job but it's not gonna be enough that the chain stuns come out and the lena takes him out 14 to 11 this is a curb stomp as we do lose another side of Rexia Mushi, finally tapping out at $33,000 behind. And that is quite a number. RP's the ground there, Mr. Rappy, you should just go upstairs. But damn, that was a crushing performance here from Clutch Gamers and Mushi. Gonna have to be going back to the drawing board for game number two here. As we are going to be seeing a 1-0 lead here from the Filipino squad. Can they keep their win streak alive? Why is there a Queen of Pain here? 
And uh, yeah, that took 39 minutes. Will Clutch Gamers make the next one even quicker? Or will Maneski equalize? It's the best of five. We've got lots of possibilities here in this match. Lots of Dota coming your way here, guys. MDL, Sophie Station Grand Finals. Winner goes to China. And uh, yeah, I'm Lysander. Give me your broadcast here on BTS. Uh, Beyond the Summit. And we'll be right back in game number two, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this match. We'll be back with you, back with you guys after the break. Thanks for watching. And uh, have the scoreboard before we cut to the break. See you guys in the next match. Much love and cap